Welcome to iHeart Baltimore's Maryland Today, a weekly program looking at critical issues and causes in the areas of health and wellness, family and social impact, education and literacy, music and arts, and more in the Baltimore region. Good morning and welcome to Maryland Today. I'm Jeff Sapier, and I appreciate you sharing some of your Sunday morning with me. Coming up soon, we've got an event that has been benefiting the Hartford County community for the last nine years. It's the ninth annual Amanda Hitchcad CCA Celebration Walk. This event benefits if it's Cancer Life Net, and it's my pleasure to share more about it today. Joining me this morning is Elizabeth Wise, President and Chief Executive Officer for the University of Maryland Upper Chesapeake Health. Elizabeth, it's a pleasure to meet you. Same here. Thanks for having me on the show today. So you've been with Upper Chesapeake for, what, about four months or so now? Yes. Well, you really came in at a uh, tough time, I think, huh? Yeah, it, well, healthcare say, is tough busy anyway, time. with or without a pandemic, I'll say. <laughs> Yeah, because if you've been there for about four months, you came in right when things were, I guess, maybe starting to even out a little bit at the start of 2022. No, they were at their peak here okay. Yeah, in terms of the number of patients we were caring for that had COVID. Well, how have things been going? Things are going great. I love our organization. I love our team members here. Um, we're seeing significantly lower cases and volume of COVID positive patients. So th- that's a good sign. And really just getting back to the basics of what we do here every day, which is caring for our team members, our community, and our patients. I haven't had the pleasure uh, of doing much with Maryland Upper Chesapeake Health uh, personally, but I've heard a lot about it. I know there's a great reputation there, but in case people listening aren't super familiar with that, why don't you tell us more about your uh, your whole system? Um, and it is a system. So we do care for patients, acutely ill patients in the hospital. We have a hospital at Hartford Memorial in um, Havage de Grace, and then we have Upper Chesapeake Medical Center in Bel Air. Those are our two hospitals. But in addition to that, we also have ambulatory care sites. We do outpatient rehab. We have a wonderful uh, cancer center, Kaufman Cancer Center. We have a uh, the Klein Family Harford Crisis Center for people that may have anxiety, depression, maybe going through some substance abuse. We have the Senator Bob Hooper House, which cares for patients at end of life uh, care. So we have a number of different assets, not only on the acute care side, but also the ambulatory outpatient side and are also our wonderful providers, whether they be in primary care, cancer care, cardiology care, orthopedic care. So really the full continuum of care for our community. We really wanna make sure that care here stays here and it's close to home. I've always been impressed at how big the reach is for Upper Chesapeake. It's just always been fascinating how many how many boxes you check off. I mean, it's kind of like a not not one particular location is a one stop shop, but you cover so many different things within your system. Yeah, we really are trying uh, to make sure that we have access for our community um, and it's care close to home, so that people don't have to travel out of the county to get the care that they need. So I was looking at a little bit of your background, Elizabeth, and uh, I don't know if you're good at taking compliments, but you've certainly had a heck of a career. Uh, so did you pursue healthcare initially? Did you always know this was going to be the path that you wanted to take? Because it seems like you were born for it. So I'm very fortunate that I've had a lot of different experiences in my career um, at different hospitals, whether it be in Washington, D.C., Delaware, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. But Um, I knew um, at the age of four that I wanted to be a registered nurse and in healthcare, don't ask me why, Um, and just really um, love being a clinician at the bedside, but also being in leadership and being able to um, be in different roles in leadership, whether it be a chief nursing officer, a chief operating officer, and now the president and CEO. One thing that's also impressed me about what's gone on at Maryland Upper Chesapeake, and I know that you're newer to the system, but you are familiar with what they do already, is uh, the reach is great in the community, but the community does mean so much to what you do. And I know that the system has been very involved in making sure people are taken care of through uh, not just the, the care that they give to folks, but also fundraising and doing different events. How important is that for you? So we have a very generous and grateful community that gives back to our organization, as well as us giving back to the community as well. Um, We couldn't do it without those partnerships being in place. Um, Our community has fundraised for us. You see it in our buildings that are named, whether it be the Kaufman Cancer Center 
or the Klein Family Hartford Crisis Center. We just have um, very grateful donors that give back to our organization, and we couldn't do it without them, right? We're a, we're a nonprofit, so anything that we do make at the end of the year gets reinvested back into the buildings that we're building in the Aberdeen and Bel Air campus, or new programs, or bringing new providers or new services to the community. So it's definitely, we both give back to each other, but we could not have done it without our great, grateful and generous um, donors. I want to make sure I get this number right. So I want to make sure I'm going to consult my notes here really quick. But I, I saw just earlier uh, in April, the Upper Chesapeake Health Foundation announced that it raised more than $26 million in a capital campaign. I know the, the initial target was $12 million, So you overdid it by more than double, which is really impressive. My hat is off to you. Well, thank you. Um, it's a team. It's sure. a team effort that w we work with our um, Office of Philanthropy and our foundation. But it's also the um, areas of focus for us um, that we fundraise for. Uh, go back to reinvesting in our people, whether it's our leaders, um, whether it's uh, Cancer Life Net, which is a program that helps support people with cancer and wraparound services as they go through their cancer journey, um, whether it's for end of life care at the Senator Bob Hooper House and really supporting uh, patients that may not have the financial means to pay for that end of life care. So all of those, those monies raised go back into investing and helping to support the residents in the community. It's important work. And we're very grateful that we've doubled it but really, in addition to the money, it's also the connections that we make with people, whether they give a dollar or more than that. It's really how do we um, embrace them as part of the Upper Chesapeake Health family? Yeah. And when they when they become a part of that family, they know that you have their back. And that's a very important thing. Absolutely. Yes. So Cancer LifeNet is a big piece of this, and we want to talk more about that because that's kind of the reason that we're here to talk today as well. So tell me more about what Cancer LifeNet is all about. So it serves as a navigation and support services. They're free of charge. It's for cancer patients and their loved ones who need them, and it involves multidisciplinary team members. So what do I mean by that? It's nurse navigators, so somebody that can help navigate you through your uh cancer diagnosis. It's social workers who help if you need transportation, helping to connect you with transportation so that you can go back and forth for your treatments because patients do either have a lot of treatments through chemotherapy or radiation oncology. Um, but it also offers other programs like yoga, healthy eating during your cancer diagnosis, guided meditation, and a lot of support groups um, that help to connect you so that you can not only physically we can take care of you, but psycho, emotionally, and socially. It's one of those things that I always find interesting is there are obviously a lot of different organizations and nonprofits out there that raise money to uh, do more cancer research and to fight cancer as a whole. And those are very, very important things. But there are so many other little things that go into being a cancer patient and the treatment itself. You know, like you just mentioned, like finding a ride to the hospital if you don't have a vehicle or your partner has the vehicle at work one day and you have to go in. You have kids at home that maybe need a little help getting a meal or going grocery shopping, all those little things. And I think I love that Cancer LifeNet tries to look at the bigger picture of how can we help these patients in the best way possible while they're getting their treatment. Yeah, you know, I'll mention the, the statistics that I have here, which are pretty amazing. Over the past year, we've um, impacted more than 1,900 people. And then um, since the founding 16 years ago, more than 18,000 cancer patients and families have benefited from this program. That's amazing. Uh, Elizabeth, where, if people want to find more information, can they go to learn more about Cancer LifeNet? Um, I would definitely go to our website, sure. um, the University of Maryland Upper Chesapeake Health website. Um, they can type in Cancer uh, LifeNet and uh, more information will be uh, available for them. Okay, so Elizabeth, don't go anywhere, but I do want to welcome in uh, one of my other guests here, which is Jocelyn Rich. Now, Jocelyn is a team captain for the ninth annual Amanda Hitchcad CCA Celebration Walk. Jocelyn, it's great to have you. Thank you, Jeff. So I have done many interviews about this walk over the years and this event, and it always uh, amazes me the community support that comes out for this. And you were at the very first one in 2014, I think it was? Yes, I was. What made you want to be a part of this? 
Amanda, Amanda yeah. Hitchcad made me want to be a part of this. She was um, an amazing friend of mine who, amazingly enough, we met in high school in Easton, Pennsylvania in 1989, went our separate ways to college after that. We're so amazed that we both were able to reconnect in Bel Air, Maryland. Um, our children were are very close in age, so we got to do many things in life together, which was uh, just a joy for me. She's my reason. Oh, that's amazing. Um, I'm sad that I never got a chance to meet her. I wish that I had had an opportunity to uh, to meet her because I I've heard so many wonderful stories from people over the years about how great she was, and I it's one of those things where I'm like, man, that just seems like a, a fascinating person that I wish that I had that opportunity. She was amazing, and her legacy through this walk and through her family is just um, such a joy to get to be a part of. So this year's event is happening on May 14th. It's going to be at the John Carroll School in Bel Air. Uh, how is it shaping up this year? Are things looking good so far? Yes. Um, you know, the support is coming in and we're thrilled that, you know, over the first years of the walk so far, we've gotten to raise $860,000 cumulatively. And this year we will reach that $1 million mark and we're already halfway there um, with the walk still being a, a little bit away. So we're so excited to be able to raise these funds for Cancer LifeNet, such an important organization. That is absolutely amazing uh, to see that growth. Because I, I know nine years of a walk may sound like a long time, but in events like this, it, it can take some time to build. But this one, I think it probably speaks to the kind of person Amanda was and her, how strong her family is in the community to see this one blossom as fast as it has. You're so right. You're so right. Um, she she truly was an amazing person with a, a, an incredible impact on this community. So the funds that we uh, that are raised by this support Cancer Life Net, as we mentioned, uh, why is it so important for these services, in your opinion, to be out there for the community? Like Elizabeth had mentioned, there's there's all these support services that are so needed for people that are dealing with a cancer journey and their families and the people that love them. This program really makes sure that no one goes through a cancer diagnosis alone and that they feel supported in ways other than just medically. I've had friends who've used Cancer Life Net in addition to Amanda, um, who, who couldn't say enough wonderful things about it, but they've, they've all raved about the incredibly positive experience they've had um, with their families in such a time of need. We mentioned that uh, you are going to be taking part in this and you have a team, right? So how, how much is your team hoping to raise this year? My goal is $2,000 okay. for this year. My, my team name is Faith, Grace, Strength. I chose that team name because that was how Amanda chose to live her life in a conversation specifically with me, but it was so important to her to share that with everyone particularly when her cancer recurred and she knew that this would be a fierce battle for her. Uh, I also heard a rumor your daughter has a team. Is that uh, correct? Tell me more about that. Yes. My daughter, Naomi, was nine years old in 2014 at the first walk. She's been at every walk on my team as a member. She's now 17 years old. She's a junior at Patterson Mill High School. And this year she decided to captain her own team for the first time. And her team name is Cancel Cancer. She's hoping to raise $1,500 this year. Is she going to beat Ma? I know her goal is less than yours, but is she going to beat Ma? Is this like a competition in the house? Like, are you guys not talking at dinner anymore? <laughs> we're still talking at dinner, <laughs> but um, we are, we're motivating one another. Um, so her demographic is like peers and students in high school. And um, my team is made up of many friends and family who have been faithful supporters over all the years, many of which knew Amanda personally and some which didn't, but are very inspired by the, her legacy and the way she ch chose to live her life with faith's grace and strength. Well, Jocelyn, if people want to find out more information about the ninth annual Amanda Hitchcad CCA celebration walk happening May 14th at John Carroll School in Bel Air, where should they go to find that info? They can go to uchfoundation.org or they can call the Upper Chesapeake Health Foundation at 443-643-3460. We'd love to have them. Elizabeth, I want to bring you in here again. I've also heard a rumor that you're organizing a team for the walk this year. 
I absolutely am. I'm wise walkers. I wish I was a little bit more creative than that. But oh, I figured that's great. That out. <laughs> w squared. And I encourage everyone to come out and join us um, for the walk, the camaraderie, um, and to also uh, raise money for this really important cause. Well, the website again is uchfoundation.org. Uh, Jocelyn, I didn't write down the phone number. Can you say that one more time for me? You bet, Jeff. It's 443-643-3460. Again, we've been talking about the ninth annual Amanda Hitchcad CCA Celebration Walk. This benefits Cancer LifeNet, such an important uh, group of people up there in Hartford County that help out the folks uh, that are going through cancer treatments, trying to make sure their life stays on track while they fight that battle. Uh, Elizabeth Wise, President and Chief Executive Officer for the University of Maryland Upper Chesapeake Health. Uh, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for your time, and I appreciate all the info. Thank you. And Jocelyn Rich, team captain for the ninth annual Amanda Hitchcad CCA Celebration Walk. A uh, pleasure to meet you as well. Good luck in the upcoming event. I hope you and your daughter both reach your goals, but I hope yours is higher than hers. Thank you so much, Jeff. We're so excited we can come all back in person together again this year. It'll be a great day. You're listening to iHeartRadio Baltimore's Maryland Today. 